up guys welcome to another POV test drive so right now I'm sitting in a 1988 Toyota MR2 um, the owner uh, buddy is actually uh, he prefers not to be identified in the video so I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around of the car and buddy's gonna give you guys um, kind of an off-camera walk through the all the modifications of the car hey so this yes yeah, is my 1988 Toyota MR2 uh, originally supercharged model I purchased it in uh, it was 1993 originally um, enjoyed uh, enjoyed having it uh, wasn't too involved with the MR2 scene um, originally uh, later on I guess a uh, long time ago you know I saw on the internet uh, uh, a twin charge where there was actually an HKS twin charge kit and uh, this one guy uh, Gerald St. Augustine uh, took his uh, took a supercharged and uh, Added, uh, modified the HKS kit, and uh, and really got a tremendous amount of power out of it. And I was thinking, like, okay, well, if I ever have uh, money someday, I would uh, like to do something similar. So this is a very project-oriented car. Um, some people call it a science experiment. It uh, has just about everything you can possibly do to it. Um, it's now twin-charged with a uh, GD3071R turbo, uh, remote mount turbo. Um, blowing into the supercharger plus a uh, bypass valve to uh, allow at the higher flow rates to uh, um, bypass the supercharger and go directly into the engine. Um, suspension's fully done. Uh, the ground control coilover kit, uh, Coney Yellows, uh, box Springs, um, Willwood brakes in the front, uh, suspension techniques, sway bars. Uh, we got uh, a cause limited slip differential for the rears. We got uh, uh, quick steering ratio kit, um, and uh, yeah, and you know all the custom piping that you saw before. So it was all done uh, to my design. Um, basically, wanting to see you know what can you get out of it. So it's fun seeing uh, how much can you really squeeze out of a uh, out of a 1.6 liter engine. Um, currently running about 300 horsepower to the wheels, and you know in the future I have a goal to to sort of reach 350 to the wheels uh, when everything's done. Uh, so the way this car is set up right now, it's uh, primarily used for, primarily set up for track. Although definitely enjoy, uh, you know, going onto, uh, going onto the street, um, you know, some hill driving, some, uh, you know, going out and just, uh, just enjoying it. But uh, it's primarily set up for, for track use. So this car isn't your daily driver, though, right? No, Absolutely no, not. it's okay. definitely, uh, definitely just a weekend fun car. Awesome. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take it for a test drive and see how it does. So first off, uh, since I have driven a completely stock, naturally aspirated version of the uh, first gen MR2 before, I won't go too much into the details on, um, you know, the driver controls and the seating position and all that, since I've already touched, touched on those subjects um, already. So, but in terms of what feels different about this particular car, um, right off the bat, even though it still doesn't have power steering. This one d feels a lot heavier once it's loaded up compared to that uh, stock MR2. And I think that's due to the uh, alignment settings since this car does have a much higher caster angle. Um, so the wheel wants to straighten out quite a bit more once you get it turned, but it does have a, a kind of a loose dead spot um, right off center, which I didn't notice in the other car I drove. But other than that, the car feels identical. Um, it has an excellent 360 degree visibility. It feels a little bit like a miniature NSX with a shortened wheelbase almost and kind of a more um, retro styling. But just in some of these tighter hairpins, the steering even feels heavier than my NSX steering. Uh, might also be the front wheels point. Oh, that's true. You've got 17s on, on this car, right? Two fifteens in the front and two forty fives in the back. Okay. What tires did you say you were running? So primarily, I'll be looking to compare the driving dynamics of this car to the stock MR2, obviously, um, and also the uh, MR2 Turbo, the second gen car that um, I drove, um, and you know him, it was Nick. Um, so I wanna compare this car to that one as well, since that one's more, It's that one was probably more closer to uh, 250 crank horsepower, so still nowhere near the levels of the 350 or so 
crank horsepower that this is making. But just in terms of the chassis, I'd like to compare this older generation to that one. This car is quite a bit lighter than the second gen, obviously, since um, I think the stock supercharged model was about 2,500 pounds. Um, after all the modifications you've done to this, you said it was corner balance at around 2,600 or so. Yeah, so still a very light car by, by most standards, but um, perhaps a little heavier than you would think just by how tiny it is. So today I'm not going to do a, a standing start because I think the clutch was slipping just a little bit earlier in second gear. So first gear is just going to probably just destroy the clutch. So I'll just, do a, I'll just do a rolling start from second gear and we'll see how the car does. got fuel cut. Oh, is it still, the temperature's not there yet? What was it saying? Oh, 132. Oh. I misread that. Okay. So we should let it warm up a bit. They cut again. Yeah. Oh, it dropped to 154 almost instantly. Okay, well, it looks like we're having a little bit of a temperature issue, which is funny because the temperatures are too low, not too high, because um, as Buddy mentioned, um, it has a system where it cuts cuts the fuel pump if, uh, if the temperatures are below 160 or so Celsius or Fahrenheit. So we'll just drive a little bit less aggressively and see how it does. Again, I think we're in a situation where this car is too much power for this road. Um, even though the red line of this car is around 8,000, I wasn't really able to push it above seven just because in those last thousand RPMs or so, the boost is just almost, it's, it's ridiculous. And um, I didn't want to take it that far here on this road. So, so in terms of the twin charge setup, it's interesting because from low RPMs, around 2,000 to, I would say, around 4,000, the car has pretty good res throttle response. Um, it feels almost naturally aspirated. Um, it doesn't feel, definitely doesn't feel like a 300 horsepower car, obviously, but it's still, I can still tell the supercharger is working um, at above about 50% throttle. I can feel there's a little bit of boost. Um, but then right around 5,000, 4,500, 5,000, the turbo just kicks in and it's the most heavily turbocharged car that I've felt before. And this is even compared to the, um, the second gen MR2 turbo that I drove. Um, so even though the supercharger is kind of giving that more low end to mid range torque, it still feels very much turbocharged. And if I didn't know it had a supercharger, I would just think it was just a heavily turbo, turboed MR2. It feels like the peak power comes on somewhere in the vicinity of 6,500 or higher. 
uh, in the revs. So you still have to wind it all the way out to get the best power out of it. Um, as I said, um, it's a little hairy on this road, so I, I didn't wind it out all the way. But even revving it to just 7,000, you've got, you got more than enough straight line performance. And being around 2,600 pounds with around 350 crank horsepower, uh, that's, I mean, that's not surprising. But in terms of the chassis performance, I think the, the one area where this car um, feels like it could use a little bit of improvement, well, there's two areas really. The first one is the suspension. For street use, it's just a little bit too bumpy and stiff. Obviously, on a much smoother track surface, this suspension setup would probably do excellent. But for street use, like I said, it's just a little too bumpy. It doesn't handle the imperfections in the road all that well. And so the steering, especially with this quicker steering ratio, um, it does tend to follow the, the grooves and, and the bumps. So it does make it a little bit hairy to drive at the limit. And the second place where I think Perhaps the car just isn't fully at operating temperature yet, but the brakes did feel a little bit mushy. That being said, once you do step on it harder, it does get the car stopped. But I think maybe the pads or the rotors are a bit cold right now and they're not fully, um, they don't have full uh, grip on the rotor, between the rotor and the pad. And another thing is that the revs, when, when you push the clutch, the revs drop very, very quickly. So it's something that I haven't gotten fully used to yet. Um, when doing heel-toe downshifts, I have to blip the throttle a little more than I typically do to get the revs high enough so that when they drop back down, it's gonna be at the right revs for the, for the next gear. So all in all, I think out of all the cars that I've driven so far, this one perhaps has the biggest learning curve. Just with the way the power, de the power delivery is and um, the stiff suspension for street use, it is not definitely the easiest car to drive, even at seven or eight tenths, but it is definitely a thrill to be pushing it just in a straight line, even. It feels every bit as accelerative as the C6 Z06 that I drove recently, and that's a 505 horsepower car, so it all comes down to power and weight, power to weight ratio. I also love the way it sounds. Even though it's a heavily turboed car, it still revs all the way to 8,000. And any car that revs to 8,000 in my books is gonna, is gonna sound good, and this one sounds good. So coming back to the comparison between this car and the second gen MR2 Turbo, um, again, this car is much more accelerative. It has about 100 more horsepower and probably 300 pounds less, less weight. So. In a straight line, this would demolish the MR2 Turbo. But in terms of um, the overall way it feels in the canyons, the, the MR2 Turbo was, was definitely more confidence inspiring. Um, I would chalk that up to the fact that it has less boost, first of all. Um, and number two, it has just has a more modern, um, well put together chassis. So I didn't feel as many creaks and rattles um, the steering, having power steering, it was easier to get through the hairpins. It didn't follow the grooves in the road as much. Um, but that being said, I think on a track, it wouldn't even be a comparison. This car would completely demolish that one in terms of lap times. It all depends on what you're into. I think if you're into a, a pure raw performance experience, this car is in the top probably one or two that I've driven for my channel so far. If you're into something that's more street, streetable and um, more daily dr drivable, then the MR2 Turbo I think is a better platform to begin with. Um, you don't have to do any crazy twin charging to get a decent level of performance out of it. Whereas this car from the factory in supercharged form, it, it had around 160 horsepower or so. And I mean, that's not incredibly underpowered, but still, I think a lot of people for a straight line performance, they're going to want to add, they're going to want some more power out of that. So the, the 350 horsepower goal, is that just kind of a personal target you want to hit? Or do you think that the, the performance of the car still has a ways to go? Like It's, it's mostly personal. It's just okay. uh, you know, what I'm... Uh 
what I've said out there. Got it. Yeah, from my perspective, this car is more than fast enough in a straight line. Uh, obviously, I've only had about 20 minutes of experience driving it, but man, it's fast. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's practically a science project, right? There's never an, there's never an end to a, really a car build. You just keep going. There's always something that can be better. And once you improve one thing, something else will break or something else will you'll realize that something else is not up to par, and it's, it's just a never-ending cycle, but... Yeah, but it's a hobby, it's fun. Yeah, definitely. And you've had this car for over 20 years, so I can see, I'm sure you're like very intimately um, in tune with with its dynamics and and everything, so... And I guess, I mean, another thing, you know, what I do like about the car as well is, in the outside, it's uh, somewhat stock. Yeah, it's not, it's not really that, flashy of a car from outside um, I mean the original paint you said yeah yeah it's basically a sleeper if you can call a mid-engine car ever a sleeper but you would never guess by looking at the car that it has 300 wheel horsepower for sure so yeah in conclusion um, amazing car, very, very special in the sense that, I mean, how many twin-charged MR2s making 300 rear, rear wheel horsepower are you going to see every day, right? Um, for my personal taste, I think the power is just a little too peaky. Um, I prefer a car that has more of a linear throttle response. Um, that being said, I, I'm sure I would get used to it very quickly if I, were, if I was to take this car to the track. Um, just for street use, canyon use though, I think it's a little, a little pushing it. But overall, it's still a really cool car. Um, thanks buddy again for letting me drive it. Um, great experience. First twin charged car I've ever driven. So I was really looking forward to seeing um, how the throttle response and the power delivery was. Um, it's a little surprising to me. Like I said, I didn't expect it to feel as heavily turboed as it did, um, having that supercharger in there also. I got a lot more content coming out for you guys in the near future. I'm going to the track again next week with the NSX. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave me any comments, suggestions, uh, feedback, and I'll see you guys next time. So, engine RPM, this is foot pounds. So, max torque comes in at around 38, 3900. And it drops down a little bit. There's a big dip here. That's the bypass kicking in. Okay, and then it goes back when the turbo kicks in. And then here, power, it shoots up very quickly due to the supercharger until about 4,000. Levels off just a little bit, but it's still climbing. And then there's, a, there's that big torque dip around 5,700, and then the turbo kicks in. It pulls all the way to 7,500. And I think if this went to 8,000, it would probably taper off slightly, right? Yeah. Okay, so that pretty much confirms what I felt through the seat of my pants. And the, this torque dip is what I felt most prominently. Just the way all of a sudden, like the car kind of doesn't accelerate that much faster for a split second, but then the, the boost builds with a turbo and then it just tears my face off, basically. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the things, again, one of the parts of the project to uh, keep working on, again, with like a, a more. Um, analog boost controller based switch over um, should smooth that out very nicely. Yep, smoothing that out I think would make the car definitely a lot more drivable on the street. Um, so max power 300, max torque two, around 270 foot pounds. So still big numbers nonetheless. Uh, actually, this this particular one it was like 289, uh, the top numbers. Oh, 289 and yeah. 302, okay. Yep, cool.